Hey guys, I got kind of a cool subject here today. It's kind of a fascinating little subject. So it's a subject that a lot of people don't think about, okay? I got mosquitoes over here in the park. Is this, okay? That the reason why the Philippines doesn't let like foreigners buy property over here is this. If they opened up the Philippines to people to buy property, this place would turn out to be like part of China literally, or to other countries, foreigners would, would buy up the Philippines like, like it was going out of style. So it's kind of a good thing that that's happened because China's flush with money and China's doing that in countries right now. They're going into countries and they're buying up everything. So China has their eye on the Philippines all the time. But I don't know when that law came into place. I'm not quite sure when it did or if it was always in place. And I think it was kind of always in place here. But I do know this. I'll say this, a lot of foreigners get pissed off about that. And it's actually nothing to get pissed off about. Just think about it. We'd be the only ones that would be able to afford property here because everybody else is poor. And the poor, the poor people over here would sell off their property to survive. The foreigners would become, would, would become kind of col like colonists here. They'd be running the show because they'd have all the money. They'd have the land, they'd have the money, they'd have the power. So part of that was taking the power away from, you know, from the people that colonized them before, meaning the United States, Japan, Spain, stuff like that. I think that was part of the reason why they did that. Nobody's quite sure why they, ha they passed that law. But I must say this, it's a damn good law. You know, if the United States did that, China and all these other countries wouldn't be going in there buying up all that stuff. We still belong to the United States. You know, we have to kind of we, we have to kind of think outside the box when we think about um, all this stuff in the world that's going on. We really do. And some people say might say, well, they could make money off of selling that property. Yeah, but then they give up certain rights. You know, and they're still selling their property. The properties are still going up over here. And you know, if you're married over here. You kind of own your property, but you kind of don't, you know, because of the courts, the way the court system works over here. They do kind of favor the Filipina, you know, and I believe that's a good idea. You know, you can still buy a condo over here and you can rent those condos out. You can still lease property and build a home on there. You can still do stuff like that. And that's cool because it still stays in the, in the hands of a Filipino. And that's pure genius, if you ask me, you know, that. People do do stuff like that in some countries still. You know, I know the Philippines can be backwards in a lot of ways. Some might argue that and say that, no, they're not. And in this case here, some, I know some foreigners say, well, they should sell uh, land, land to Americans or Westerners or expats or whatever. No, they shouldn't. You know, I mean, that's just my thoughts. They shouldn't sell land. They shouldn't sell land at all to foreigners. You know, because... What's gonna, like I said, what's going to happen is China will come in here, the Koreans will come in here, Americans will come in here, Canadians will come in here, and they screw up the place. And that's what happens. You know, when I come here, I don't get involved in the politics here. You know, I don't get involved in the politics. I stay away from that. Do I talk about it with my girlfriend and stuff? Hell yeah, who doesn't? You know what I mean? But I don't sit at a table and talk to other people much about politics here. It's not a good thing to get into over here anyway. It's not like in the US, you know? And I'm kind of glad I got away from all that crap, you know, back in the US. And it's one thing I like about over here is that they don't want you to talk about politics over here. You know, the, the government doesn't want people talking about politics over here. They've actually arrested nuns and stuff over here for speaking out that were over here from other countries speaking about, you know, human rights or whatever issues and they were arrested and arrested or taken aside or whatever and and sent out of the country and those people fight to come back in here or whatever you know and there's been some other people that were kicked out of the country also for for talking too much or something you know and you got to be careful over here you know if you talk too much about stuff like that it's not good for expats to to talk about um political things over here police issues, city issues, 
things like that. Can you complain to your barangay and stuff like that? Hell yeah, you can. And they're nice about it, you know, and most barangays. You can go there and complain about your neighbor or about garbage or something, but be careful. You know, you don't want to make enemies too. Try to be polite. A lot of Westerners have some kind of really bad habits of the way they handle things. And you think you can handle it in a really bad, negative way. It's best to handle it in a positive way. All the people in my neighborhood, one thing I can say is they have a, a respect for me. Because anybody in my neighborhood knows that if something happens, you know, they can probably come to me and I'll probably help them out in some way. You know, because most of the people in my neighborhood are like family. I love my neighborhood. I love my people. And I, but when I say my people, I honestly mean that. Those are my people. You know, and when you move into your neighborhood, you'll have your people. Do I have dickheads in my neighborhood? Yeah, I do. Do I re still respect them and still talk to them and try to stay friendly with them? Yeah, I do. You know, some people, I just kind of stay away from a little bit more than others. But every neighborhood's going to have those, you know. And I still try to stay friendly with them. It's just a good way to be, you know. Where I say, God bless them, you know. So, and some people can be hard to get along with. And some of the people, I actually have one neighbor who's very difficult to get a heart, uh, uh, to get along with. And when I found out that he was having some serious issues with his family financially, you know, I walked over and I helped him out. And I'm not trying to, you know, blow my horn or anything like that, but it kind of keeps you on, on a, in a good way with these people because they know that you're there and you care about them, you know. I'm not telling you to bail out everybody because you can't, you know, but a few bucks here or there can help somebody. And I know some of you guys don't have the money to do that, but when you do have it, help them. You know, and I, I kind of push that because it's part of being a successful expat over here. Giving is a big thing. It's a big thing. You know, helping people. It doesn't mean if they ask you for $100, you've got to give them $100. You can give them $10. You can give them 2 5 whatever. Or, you know, convert that over to pesos or whatever. I'm talking about whether it be euros or dollars or whatever. You know, you can give them whatever you want. Whatever you feel free to, to, whatever your heart tells you to give them, give them, you know. Maybe you don't have it. Then tell me you don't have it. They'll understand. Some people don't, but that's, that's on them. That's not on you. You offered your help. It's the best you can do, you know. But anyway, guys, just wanted to throw that out there, you know. Anyway, guys, God bless. Take care.